Bleeding has received a pretty big update in Space Station 14. Bleeding is just simply the act of bleeding when you take a brute type of damage. So if I get hit by a 12 damage toolbox, I will bleed a little bit. As you can probably imagine without even knowing that things like blunt objects don't make you bleed nearly as bad as something cutty like a combat knife. Slash does more bleeding, slash does more bleeding than pierce, and pierce does more bleeding than blunt. I typically avoid using VV to explain things because you don't see this as a player, but you can notice it as a player, so I will use it in this circumstance. So for example, all of these weapons do 12 damage of their respective types. A 12 damage hit, a blunt, will do roughly about one bleed, which you can always just look on the side of your screen to see how much you're actually bleeding. A 12 damage pierce hit will do 2.4 bleeding, so well over two times as deadly as a blunt hit, but remember blunt does take stamina so they have their own trade-offs there. And finally, we come to a 12 damage slash, which is the real deadly one at exactly three, so four points of slash is one point of bleeding, just that one's actually easy to remember. But what you need to just remember is that you getting cut is bad for you, getting hit with a baseball bat, you're probably not going to bleed to death if they don't just kill you first. Okay. So now we move into the fun part of the bleeding. How does bleeding damage work? Well, it's really simple. All player characters in the game have 300 units of blood or 100% blood level. You don't start taking damage until you drop down to 90% or 270 units of blood. And I could just stab myself once, which remember is three bleed amounts, which is really just to indicate just how long you're gonna bleed for. On the side of the screen, you can see that you are bleeding and you will naturally clot your bleeding over time so if you have a very light cut just like this you will actually not bleed to the point that you take any blood loss damage and you can relatively ignore it also you can observe if somebody else is bleeding by shift clicking them and clicking the health he is bleeding he has minor cuts that minor cuts is referencing the slash but as long as it doesn't say they look pale or is profusely bleeding they're probably fine pale indicates that they are taking blood loss damage so what happens if I get cut three times? This is very severe. A, that's a lot of brute damage. And B, I almost maxed out the bleed rate. So you're going to actively see my blood level drop below 90%. And as soon as it does so, the blood loss damage starts ticking. You take about half a point, a little over half a point of blood loss damage every time it ticks. Which gives you quite a lot of time to deal with the bleeding. If you are bleeding this badly... You need to figure out a way to stop the bleeding as soon as possible. Because once you drop this much blood, it starts becoming a big problem. I mean, I don't think I need to really explain that you don't want to lose 30% of your blood. Because uh, that's not healthy for you. But what you can do is, if you're in an area with light bulbs, and that means there's power on, you can just touch a light bulb. And heat damage cauterizes one-to-one -to -one to, with how much you're bleeding. So if you have five bleeding and you take five heat, it will cauterize it entirely. This doesn't mean you're out of the woods though. As a human, in this situation, at my character right now where I have lost 30% of my blood, I am dying from blood loss, and so what do I do to take care of this blood loss? Well, medical is probably your best bet, but medical is not required for humans and dwarves, you absolutely should get to med if you took that much bleeding. If you examine yourself, you're pale, and you are just obviously dying. If you don't have a health analyzer, it might not be super obvious that you're dying. But as long as you have it, they look, you look pale message, you will be taking damage. But if you do a little scavenging through maintenance, so you just can't make it to medical, look for these emergency closets. There's a chance they have oxygen deprivation treatment kits in them. Inside what these is a pill canister of Dexalin with 70 units of Dexalin. Dexalin heals air loss damage, which it means it will halfway treat blood loss, and you could take 20 units without overdosing. So you could just eat two of these pills and either take the rest with you or just hope that's enough, because again, I'm assuming you don't have a health analyzer at this point. Dexalin does not help restore your blood, so that is worth mentioning, but you can also find things like iron pills potentially, and iron at this point would basically solve your problem if I just eat a 10 unit iron pill. We can observe that my blood level will jump up. Also, you can see the blood loss going down naturally because I took the Dexalin, which, again, nowhere near the best medicine for blood loss, but you can find it actively without needing to go to chem. And oxygen treatment kits are somewhat common. Dexalin's somewhat common on its own. Just something worth considering. 
And now that I took the iron pill, the iron pill will make my blood level jump up massively once it starts metabolizing, as you can see. And as soon as you get back to that 90%, the blood loss will start healing on its own, and you actually do not need further medical treatment for blood loss if you are above 90%. And at this point, we are totally fine, minus our normal damages. So that's really all there is to talk about actual blood loss. If you bleed and don't cauterize it quickly, you're going to bleed for a long time, meaning you'll have to find alternative medicines. If you can cauterize the bleeding very quickly and you're not at super high levels of damage, you will probably only bleed a little bit. Uh, if you get hit by a blunt object, you pretty much don't need to worry about bleeding at all. If you get stabbed or cut, uh, you will have to pay attention to your bleed levels. Again, what I would do, I would just look on the side and it's like, holy shit, I am that bleeding that badly? Grab a light bulb. Now, the amount of damage you're going to take over time just got reduced by, I don't know, like 50%, possibly even saving you from going into crit. Something also worth mentioning, I will heal myself because I'm near dead. Something also worth mentioning is that your emergency medipen will stop all bleeding instantly. So if I give myself max bleed stacks, like so, and just inject myself, and you'll see the blood loss practically go away. Not quite instantly, but it's pretty fast, and we are not bleeding, or we're very close to not bleeding. That, is ma that was at maximum stacks, by the way. But that is the difference between losing 60% of your blood and only losing about 10% of your blood. I am not even pale just based off injecting myself the second I got stabbed. Obviously, in a real match uh, or in a real fight, you're not going to be able to do that that quickly, but that's okay. The steps of combat are get out of your fight or win your fight, stop the bleeding, figure out how to get blood back in your system. Because what's the good of healing the physical damage on you if you just bleed out anyway? But there's a caveat to that. If you heal the physical damage, you get more time to bleed out, which... I know it's a little weird, but without things like surgery or wound med, that's just how it is. You can slap 50 band-aids on yourself, and then you can lose like literally all the blood in your system, and you'll still live for a while because you're not any closer to 100 damage and crit. But I don't want to stammer on with that forever. And now we'll move on to if you're playing an animal race. If you're playing a Diana, a slime, a moth, or a lizard, you actually don't have to worry about bleeding nearly as much. So now, we will test it as a lizard. I will stab myself to the point I have max bleed stacks. Which takes about 4 hits to get over max bleed stack to get max bleed stacks. Just a little over due to taking 12 damage. So somewhere around 45 slash, you will take max bleed stacks if you just want a good specific number. It's not precise, but it's around there. Animal species, like the ones I labeled off, can actually deal with bleeding rather effectively without getting directly to medical. So, I'm just going to let myself keep bleeding to the point where it's like I'm actively avoiding dealing with my current bleeding and I'm just literally drinking blood. You can, so, you can just alt-click any type of blood off the ground like this and just keep drinking it. Or if you have a syringe, it's even more effective. You can just syringe 15 units at a time and syringe it directly into your bloodstream. And animals... Blood converts into uncooked proteins, which converts into proteins. And proteins actually restore blood level and heal a little bit of brute damage. The healing is pretty low, but if you're at the point where you're this desperate to survive, uh, animal species drinking blood is definitely a real method of survival. Uh, syringing is obviously way more effective. Drinking is pretty ineffective. But if you have a syringe, which you can get pretty commonly, they're not that rare, you can literally just syringe your own blood that you're bleeding, unless you're a uh, Diana, because Diana uh, bleed water. Also, slimes bleed slime, so those two can metabolize the blood, but they don't bleed like normal blood, so they can't directly heal themselves off of it. But I'm just syringing some extra puddles of blood, and there's always puddles of blood in this game. And I didn't cauterize my bleeding at all, and just by syringing myself with blood, I basically got myself out of a bleeding to death situation not quite if i were to have if i had more physical damage i obviously would have died but just by syringing myself with like 60 or so units and drinking a little bit i did manage to stave off death long enough at lowish damage to the point that my blood level will hit 90 in just a few more ticks 
and all this blood loss damage would heal on its own, and then I can figure out how to heal the brute damage later. Of course, if you did get slashed up, you can always make gauze, but if you have to actively make gauze to stop the bleeding, and you didn't have the gauze beforehand, uh, it's really not going to make too much of a difference. You're not going to be able to heal yourself uh, like that amazingly. So just as a reminder, light bulbs are a great cauterizing tool. The faster you do it, the less damage you're going to take over time. If you don't have access to a light bulb, you can always use something like a lighter. Lighters actually do one damage of heat. So you can literally sit there hitting yourself with a lighter just to cauterize your wounds. And a lot of people carry lighters on them. If you have a welding torch, that's even better. But the lighter can actually minimize damage by a few points. But yeah, there are lots of ways to cauterize yourself on the go. Uh, there's things like tourniquets, which are better. But having a Zippo and stuff is like just commonplace you can get them from cigarette machines so like this cigarette machine on its own can actually provide a decent bit of cauterization now there's eight lighters in it so just something to consider i don't want to ramble on forever i've already rambled on quite a lot but knowing how to deal with bleeding is very important for any form of combat and it's important for medical doctors so thank you for watching